Praise the Lord. Amen. We are victorious. Praise God. Praise God. If you've read the back of the book, and I mean the Bible, you know that God wins the whole thing. Amen. Amen. You and I are winners. Praise God. The Bible says, he that endures to the end, the same shall be saved. Praise God. So no matter what you're going through today, no matter what you're facing, amen, we could put whatever it is on that line that, amen, that's drawn and say, okay, this is what I'm facing right now. This is it, what I'm going through. There's nothing too hard for God. Amen. Praise God. If you and I just make up our minds that we are going to be people of faith. The Bible says there's nothing too hard for for God. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, worship team. Amen. Creating that atmosphere and you folks worshiping and loving God. That is what it's all about. Amen. Worshiping God. We worship him from our heart, right? Amen. We praise him with the clapping of our hands, with raising our hands, with shouting. Amen. If you don't understand praise and worship, it's okay. You're going to figure it all out. You can study it or someone can teach you. We have a lesson about praise and worship and why we do it. Amen. So very, very important. We do it unto the Lord. Amen. I've said this so many times, but it, it's, it makes sense. You've seen people shouting and going crazy at a football game, and they're doing it, you know, for a ball, something made out of leather. And, and we, but we do this. Why? Because... While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He is our Savior. Amen. We have truly something to worship about. Praise God. A few announcements from me, just things that need to be mentioned. Life groups, March 5th, we will have our life group fair. That is, we have an abbreviated service and then a portion of that service You'll get to see what life groups uh, are all about. You'll get to see what life groups we'll be having for that semester. Tables will be set up. We do encourage everyone to participate in a life group. We're hoping that this becomes who we are as a church, that not only do we meet, gather on Sundays and Wednesdays, but we gather throughout the week. And I know that we are very busy people, and so... We really do got to try our very best to prioritize. And we just encourage you to be involved. Very, very important that you do that. March 5th will be our life group fair. And uh, then we'll be launching those. And uh, it's going to be a great semester, amen, of getting together and doing whatever uh, the life group will be doing. Again, we have connect groups. That means you can get together to just to talk. You can get together. And I think, I nobody steal this. I think my life group for the summer is going to be a cornhole life group. Amen. I know there's a lot of people that like to play that game. And uh, that's just a connect group. It's just getting together to, you know, maybe you want to uh, uh, go for a walk or uh, whatever. Anything that is a connection, bringing people together. Then we have, so you got connection, then you got grow. A grow group would be that you're going to be studying a Bible study or a book or watching uh, end time videos or whatever it is. And then we got, so we got connect, grow, and then we got serve, where we are organizing an event where we are giving back, that we are serving our community. Amen. And so this is our first year doing life groups, and they're still kind of, you know, on that. They're on the right trajectory, but they just really haven't uh, taken a whole lot of flight. But I I'd rather go slow than fast. I'd rather go slow and we do it right. Amen? Amen. Praise God. So again, encouraging everyone to be a part of that. I do want to thank the church, all of you, for your giving. Uh, if you remember, it's been a little while uh, that we've been raising money uh, for, uh, if you remember, Mike Kale from the Appleton Church. He suddenly passed away. And uh, we raised money uh, for him and then Brother Kent, the pastor in Minneapolis, Minnesota, that fell on the ice and is paralyzed from his neck down. Uh, we raised $400 to give to Brother Kale 
and $900 to give to Brother Kent. And so thank you for your giving to that. And uh, we'll be sending those checks out this week uh, so that we can be a blessing to a brother. Uh, this particular happened to be uh, two brothers or sisters that need our, um, our uh, help. Amen? Amen? Praise God. And then, how many of you have been seeing what's going on in that Ashbury revival? It's all over Facebook. How exciting is that, right? Amen. A spiritual awakening? Amen. This is what our nation Our world needs, amen. We need to get our eyes off of ourselves, our eyes off of all the the terrible news in our world, and we need to focus upon God, amen. Praise God. I believe if God can do it there, he can do it anywhere. Amen. I think it has to do with the hunger of you and I. If you and I are hungry, amen, then we will see God and we will see him move in our lives. Praise God. That's what we need is an awakening to not religion i think for the most part people are fed up with religion right um religion doesn't save you and i it's that relationship with jesus it's that ongoing every day relationship with jesus amen it's that ongoing every day relationship with jesus even though you're going through a hard and a, tr- and a hard time in trials. He that endureth to the end, amen, shall be saved, amen. So we got to endure through whatever it is uh, that we are going through. My wife and I were talking about this the other day. Did you know what? Everybody's going through something. Everybody's going through something. And some people can just, they can just look like they're doing better than other people. You know what I mean? But everybody's going through stuff. And just because on Facebook that you're, they're taking pictures of themselves, you know, in Hawaii or in, uh, you know, uh, Port of Arta or wherever, it doesn't matter, uh, Cunacan in Mexico, doesn't mean that their life is great and good. It doesn't mean anything. People put their best on, on social media, but behind, behind closed doors, everybody's going through something, right? Praise God. I'm, I'm glad to know. I'm glad to know who Jesus is. Praise God. Amen. If you have your Bibles, you have your Bibles uh, this morning. We are going to turn to the book of Luke, Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10. And we do have first steps following this service. So I try to get right to uh, my message today. Uh, first steps is very, very important for those that are onboarding here at Hope City Church that want to get involved, and we want to give you that opportunity uh, to do that. So um, right after service will be our first steps. Luke 10 and verses 38 through 42. I'm going to talk about two sisters today. Two sisters. Luke 10, verse 38 says, Now it came to pass, as they went, that he entered into a certain village, And a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was cumbered about much serving. And came to him and said, Lord, dost thou not care that my sister hath left me to serve alone. Bid her, therefore, that she help me. You can almost put yourself right there in the living room, you know what I mean? And Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things. Now, again, there's a lot here. I saw Brother Dan look up at me. You know, when you preach the word, you can, there's a lot of different places you could go here. But verse 42 says, But one thing is needful, and Mary hath chosen that good part, which shall not be taken away from her. Amen. Amen. I think that's kind of what's going on at the Ashbury Revival. Amen. Location. Praise God. Let us pray today and let's get into the word of God. Father, thank you for your written word. 
Thank you for the spirit of the word that is alive and well that's going to find its way into our heart. I pray you anoint me to deliver what you have laid on my heart. In Jesus' name, touch every hear of the word of God. And everyone said amen. 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 Would you be nice to somebody around you? Smile at somebody. Amen. Let somebody know you appreciate them. Let somebody know you're happy to be in the house of the Lord. Praise God. David said, I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of God than to dwell in the tents of the wicked. Praise God. Amen. Once you've waved at a few people, let somebody know how nice you are. Show them your pearly whites, you know, your pearly white gates. Amen. That's your teeth, you know. Let them know that, uh, like me, I, I can't show them my pearly whites. It's my coffee stained smile that's got me all bent out of shape. But uh, that's another sermon for another time. Amen. What a privilege it is to know Jesus, amen? Amen. What a wonderful honor it is to not only have heard about Jesus, but to know him personally. There is nothing like having a relationship with a living, loving, caring, and compassionate God. Can I get an amen? But you see, I've been talking about this for several weeks now an overcoming relationship with God comes only by getting close to God and so that is my message today staying close to God as believers you and I must never forget that our present location our present location determines our permanent destination now i'm not talking about 1866 north Casaloma drive i'm talking about our close relationship with jesus christ it's not about an address right it's not about that kind of location but you see when you and i are close to to g to jesus easy for me to say our present location no doubt determines our permanent destination. Our daily steps are just as important as where you and I will arrive, right? What that means is you and I can't just live any way we want and expect to please God or expect to one day forever live with him. What the sun is to the day, what the moon is to the night, what the dew is to the flower, what the bread is to the hungry, what clothes are to the naked, and the shadow from the sun, so is Jesus, and so should Jesus be to you and I today. Psalm 34 and 8 says, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Anyone that's ever tasted of the goodness of God, uh, amen, you know today how good uh, he is. You know that he is a forever help in the time of trouble. You know that no matter what you're going through, when you call upon the name of Jesus, uh, he is there. He is good to the tasting. And that scripture says, blessed is the man that trusteth in him. Sadly, many taste the goodness of God. Many taste the goodness of God, but few really learn, few really learn to trust him. The Bible says that many are called, but few are chosen. But I don't only want to taste the goodness of God, but I really want to learn about him. In 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 7, 2 Timothy 3, 7 says, ever learning, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Uh, Oh, what a scary place to be, right? Amen, a person that desires uh, to learn. You have met them, I have met them, a person that loves knowledge, and they are very educated. They are not elementary in theology. They understand uh, the word of God. But this scripture says, uh, and you know it to be true, uh, because we have even seen televangelists uh, that get up 
and they know all about the Bible. Uh, but what happens is uh, they never, amen, come to the knowledge of the truth. Uh, they can have all kinds of scriptures memorized. But ever learning but never really see the truth. Oh God, help the man, uh, help the woman today uh, that has great knowledge and understanding of the Bible. Help them that have not found salvation. Uh, I'm here to tell you that Jesus uh, is the truth, the life, and the way. Uh, I'm here to declare, uh, amen, we gotta have a relationship with Jesus. Can I get an amen this morning? You and I must let our faith, we must let our faith you have faith. The Bible said every man, God give every one of us a measure of faith. You determine, you determine what you do with that faith. You determine if you squabble it. You determine if you just let it lay there and it, it not grow. Uh, you know, but you and I, we have to, you and I have to pump up that faith. We have to grow that faith. You and I have been given faith and we've been given a desire uh, to know God. Amen. It's important that you and I let our faith and desire to know God give way to greater faith and more desire each and every day. What are you doing with the minutes that God has given to you? What are you doing with the moments that we have? Hear me today. You and I know that we can squander the hours. We can squander the moments and the minutes that we have. Hear me today up to you and I to whet our appetite for God. It's up to you and I to stay hungry. It's up to you and I to prioritize God in our life. It's up to you and I, amen, if we are going to make the things of God important or not. It's up to you. Uh, I said it just Wednesday night, I believe. Uh, amen. Give me five minutes or I uh, did it last Sunday. Give me five minutes with somebody's checkbook and I can tell you all about that person. Hear me today. Hear me somebody. Uh, amen. Let me spend just a few minutes with you uh, and talk with you and before you know it, we'll know all all about you. We will know what makes you turn. We will know what, 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 what motivates you. Hear me. I know that everybody here wants to be motivated by God. You want to be motivated by him. But it's up to you. It's up to me if that's going to be the, the case or not. When I leave the house of God, do I leave this relationship with God at church? Or does it or does it come with me? Is it who I am, right? Is it who I am? I say this, I joke about it. Just because I painted before doesn't make me a painter, right? Amen. Just because I take the garbage out every Wednesday morning doesn't make me a garbage man. Uh, but I'll tell you what, uh, amen. Just because you go to church doesn't make you a Christian. And that is true. Uh, oh, God, help somebody today. Uh, amen. That that's what they want to be every moment uh, of every day. They want to be a Christian. Christ-like. Somebody says, I don't know if I've ever looked at it, but somebody says the dictionary next to a Christian says a little Jesus. I don't know if that's true or not. But Matthew chapter 5 and verse 6 says, Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. They shall be filled. Amen. You and I will do this by putting God where he belongs in our lives by making him uno number one by making him amen the most important thing in our lives by daily seeking after him amen i can't just turn to god when, when everything is bad amen i gotta turn to god on any given day amen why because i love him because i am in relationship with him in the good times and the bad times amen he is my god in the good times in the bad times. Uh, amen. He is my closest friend. Uh, amen. In the high times and in the low times. Uh, amen. He is. He is my. He is my. My savior. Yes. By making the same decisions. 
with those things that take us away from God. Hear me, it's not just, it's just, it's not just doing the right things every day, but it's making the same decisions with those things that take me away from God. It's saying no to those. I got to say yes to those things that draw me nearer to God. But I also have to say no to those things that take me farther away from God, right? Amen. That's why the Bible says a double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. That is the problem with the church today and the world today that many people call themselves Christians that ought not. Amen. Because they may call themselves a Christian, but they don't act like one. God forbid that you and I are not like that, but we have prioritized God. We have put him first in our life. We have made him the center of our life. And things have changed for us. If you and I can simply believe and obey, then we will see him. And then in seeing him, we will see ourselves as we are. And then we will begin to experience that life-changing power of God on a day-to-day basis. Luke 19 says, For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which is lost. The truth is that he concerns himself I'm thankful today that that he does concern himself with mankind, the things that are going on in your life and mine. I want to tell somebody, you matter to God. I matter to God. We all matter to God. Whatever it is that you are facing today, whatever it is that you're going through, whatever it is that you will face or that you may or may not go through, God cares he cares and he will be with you uh, if he's gonna allow you to go through it right Uh, if you're stuck uh, if you're in a place where uh, you feel like it is impossible uh, i'm here to tell you that nothing is impossible with god Uh, either my god will go through it with you uh, or he will deliver you from it can i get an amen? amen hallelujah hallelujah you've heard it said when it comes to real estate it's all about location 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 well it's even more true when it comes to how close i am to god it's not in what part of the world that you live in or from what side of the tracks that you come from but it does matter greatly in what proximity your heart And your mind is from God. People wonder why they go through the things that they're going through. Yet they haven't given much thought to their dedication and their commitment to God and the things of God. Hear me, my God cares about you. And if you put yourself where you need to be, if you prioritize God uh, amen he has promised in his word uh, that he would never leave you nor forsake you Uh, he has uh, he has promised that and my God is not a liar Uh, my God is true uh, and he will keep his promise and he will see you through how often is God on our mind throughout our day God must not be a passing thought or a, or a byproduct. It is vitally important that God is the center of everything that we do. Now, it's been years ago that this thought came to me, and I share it. It was a, a brand new year, and I got up, maybe some of you remember, I said this. I said, I'm not putting God first this year. Uh, and and this, that thought came, uh, this thought came from that. So I believe that God should be the center of everything that we do. And I think God being the center is better than him being first. For if some reason we have forgotten to put him as the first thing in our day, too often, once that first moment of the day When we forget Jesus, we just then pick that up tomorrow. But if God 
is the center, right? If he's the center and not the first, then we stop what we are doing and we realign. We, we stop and at that moment, right now, again, we begin to make him the highest of priorities and purpose, right? It's kind of like a diet, right? You have determined that you're not going to eat certain foods, you know, and all of a sudden you, there's a special event. There's always special events when you're on a diet or going into a fast, you know. You, you know, you decide to go on a fast and uh, people in the church all of a sudden out of nowhere invite you over for dinner. It's really, really weird how that happens or they make you, you know, your favorite dish or something. Uh, but you see, you, you eat something you shouldn't eat and you're like, ah, well, I already blew it. Uh, then I'm going to just binge today, right? I'm going down there. I'm buying me the biggest Snicker bar. Uh, you know, I'm going to buy me a chocolate cake. Or, you know, you heard me say that where I went to my psychologist and he said, Phil, you got to start finishing things that you start. You got to begin to finish things. So I went home and finished, you know, that three or four, you know, bag of chips that I started and finished that chocolate cake that my wife made the other day, right? I think we need to make God the center of everything that we do. What a joy it is to be able to come close to Jesus, to choose that location, to even sit at his feet and receive what you and I need to receive from him. Our location to God is in our own hands. Some choose their careers, their addictions, their talents, their hobbies, their grudges. And sadly, some have chosen their couches on church days, but the greatest place, as we know it anywhere, the greatest place is to be close to Jesus. None of the stuff in this world can take the place of a personal relationship with God. All other choices or anything else that might be in jockeying for first place in our life will never, it will never fill the void in our hearts like a relationship with Jesus can. You see, that new life that we all need can only be found close to the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, that's why I like what's going on in, at that Ashbury College, at Ashbury Revival. I, I like what I see. Why? It's because people, uh, amen, are stopping what they're doing, right? Uh, amen. It, it's not a, a normal right now. Uh, they, they, they've ceased what they're doing, and they're focusing on Jesus. Uh, amen. That, that, that's something good, uh, amen, to do. That's something awesome and when you and I get our eyes uh, off of normality and off of our everyday stuff uh, and begin to focus on the things of God hallelujah amen that one thing that needs to be surrendered to God through consecration can only be accomplished by you and I getting closer to God and determining in our heart that there will be a change and that things will not stay the same. That I'm not just going to speak out loud an idle promise. That I'm, I'm not just going to make another commitment that I didn't, I didn't mean, right? Hear me, that's why I, I don't ever want to run anybody away from the house of God. I, I think that as long as somebody's coming to church, there's hope in their life, right? As long as they're coming here, and it shouldn't matter how long somebody comes to church, uh, and, and if they come to church five or ten years, uh, and they haven't made uh, a men uh, move to the altar, don't you run them away. Uh, you still show them the love of God. Uh, you still show them that they're part of Hope City Church. You love them. We should love them into a relationship with Jesus Christ. The Bible declares that the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. When you and I, when we're close to Jesus, when, we're, when we have his spirit living in us, something's going to happen. Something's going to change. Something's going to move in me. There was a preacher. I've used this before. There was a preacher that bathed regularly twice a day. He took two showers or two baths a day and and on being asked why he bathed twice a day, he replied, because I cannot conveniently do it three times. If those who love the scripture were asked why they read the Bible so often, why they pray, why you attend church, 
they might honestly reply, because we cannot find time to do it more often. Hear me, how precious it is, amen, for God's people to gather into the house of God, amen, to be a strength one to another. That's why, that's why we come to the house of God, amen, amen. We can be a strength to one another. We can come corporately together and worship together, hear the preaching of the word of God. Oh, it's so important to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Somebody asked that 88-year-old man, that old grandfather, why he goes to church twice a week and he says, because I want, I want the world to know whose side I'm on. Right? Amen. There's a reason why we do what we do. There's a reason why, amen, when you look at my life, uh, you're going to see something different than, than, than what you're going to see from somebody else. Uh, amen. I want, I want people to see Jesus. Uh, and the only way they're going to see Jesus uh, is if I'm close to Jesus, uh, if I stay close to him. Amen. You see, the appetite for God and his word grows on that which it feeds on. Yeah. Right? Let me say that again. The appetite that you and I have for God, the appetite we have for his word, it will grow on that which it feeds on. If all you and I are doing is having our nose in secular, secular books and watching television all day long and looking on social media and playing video games or, or, or hanging out with the wrong crowd and, and, and not having any intention on witnessing to them, not having any intention on being a, a testimony. Uh, hear me, uh, your appetite, uh, your appetite will lead, uh, will lead you in whatever direction, uh, amen, that you're feeding. And it's important uh, that you and I make up our minds today uh, that we are going to stay close to Jesus. You see, at the feet of Jesus is a place of salvation. It's a place of grace and mercy, a place of pardon. And in our text, while Jesus was visiting a city and he was teaching in a home, Mary, Martha's sister, sat at Jesus' feet. And I, I can only paraphrase, and you know, we're smart people, right? I can only imagine her face, and I can, I can see it in my mind's eye in that home, and as they're sitting there, as, as she is taking in every word that Jesus is saying, she has already realized who he is. She's already experienced his saving power. And there she is sitting there listening to every saving word. Amen. That her master, the Messiah, amen, right? God in the flesh, amen, is saying. Here she is holding on, listening, taking in everything. And notice, she, Mary, wasn't cumbered like her sister, right? right. If, you, if you read that scripture text, it, it's so beautiful to me how it just is very interesting. When Jesus' response to Martha, the one complaining about the sister sitting at Jesus' feet, he said, thou art careful and troubled about many things. Now, I, I just want to take a second, amen, and, and say that there's absolutely nothing, there's absolutely nothing wrong with her, uh, be, someone being hospitable. There, there's absolutely nothing wrong with a woman in the kitchen, or a man in the kitchen, for that matter, okay? I mean, there's nothing wrong with, 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 with a person, with a woman or a man that is, is very hospitable, that wants, to, that wants to cook and take care, amen? But in this moment, uh, there is a message that you and I, there, in, this, in this moment, there's, there, there's a message that's being taught here. A principle is in there, it, it, what's going on in your life. Uh, she, Martha, was going through some things, uh, and where she needed to be uh, was right beside her sister at the feet of Jesus uh, listening to every single word that was coming out right. of his mouth can I get an amen? amen how often 
are we in this situation? How often? We don't have to be in a home. We could be in a church service on Sunday morning. We could be on the, we could be on the seventh row. We, matter of fact, we, wherever we might be, wherever we might find ourselves in the preacher's preaching, and, and we're not listening to every word. We're, we, are, we are troubled, right? We are careful about too many things. We're just, we're worried about the wrong thing. We're focusing on the, on the thing in the moment that doesn't matter. Because I'll tell you what, when I go to somebody's house, I, I, I'm very impressed with hospitality. You go to the Walburn's house, you're going to be treated as a very, a very good guest. They're going to take care. There's nothing wrong with hospitality. There's nothing wrong with it, but everything is wrong with whatever keeps you and I in the moment from getting what we need for God right now. You see, I know for a fact that I'm preaching to people that need God. I'm preaching to people that need an Ashbury revival. I, I'm preaching, I'm talking to people this morning that if my people who are called by my name uh, would humble themselves uh, and pray, uh, and I'm, I'm talking to people right now in that moment that nothing else matters but getting close to Jesus and staying close to him. Amen. Mary's hunger to be close to Jesus and listening to Jesus' every word was noticed and recorded in Scripture, as was Martha's disappointment that her sister wasn't helping her in the kitchen. In verse 39, it says, And she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at Jesus' feet. It said, Also, so Martha, was she there prior? To all of a sudden, thinking that there was a, something else more important, right? Was Martha sitting there as well, but saw something more important to do? But Martha was covered about with much servant and came to him and said, Lord, dost thou not care that my sister hath left me to serve alone? See, both are important. Sitting, listening to Jesus and serving others. Being hospital is important, but we know what Ecclesiastes declares that there is a time for everything. But when Jesus is in the house, when it's time to reflect, when it's time to reveal, when it's time to grow, nothing is as important as he is. And you and I are getting from him what we need. It mattered to Mary where she was going to be. She had a purpose in that moment. And in that moment, she needed Jesus. That is a beautiful, a beautiful principle, a beautiful message. To know what we need. I could preach on that. To know what we need. How do we know what we need? The Bible says the word of God is a schoolmaster. You don't know what you need unless you're in the Bible. You don't know what to do unless you're in the book. Uh, unless you're in the book to know what we need uh, for you and I to choose the right. Uh, to, for you and I to choose the right and needful thing when we need it. It's such a powerful thing. Mary had already identified what it was in her life that was keeping her back. That one thing that, if not dealt with, would define her and determine her future. You see, when it comes to what we've done, what we've been through, our faults or our failings or our wanderings, our, our apathy, right? It's in the desperation of our situation that turns us toward God into an altar of repentance and change. i got to come to a close. I'm, a, I'm already seven minutes past 11. What's your struggle how bad is it? How bad do you want to be free? It shouldn't matter what others think. It didn't for Mary. Your location matters. How close are you to Jesus today? When you and I realize where we need to be, things will begin to happen in our lives. You see, close to Jesus is the answer. Positive and fruitful things will begin to happen when we change our direction, when you and I focus more upon our location. There is no better place for us to be than on the potter's wheel and for you and I to be sitting before the mercy seat. You see, some of us here today need a solitary place to go to to meet God. 
A solitary place can be an altar, it can be your living room, it could be in your car, somewhere where you can, where you can stop focusing on everything else and focus on getting closer and staying closer to God. We need a place where there is no distractions, where it's just you and God, a place where we can reflect upon our relationships, on our relationship with God and our, our consecrations to God. How wonderful to know that Jesus relates to sinners and how wonderful it is to know that Jesus can relate to whatever you and I are going through today. He cares about our continued growth, whatever we are going through, whatever it is that we need to change about ourselves. He cares. God cares enough to see it through. I could, I've got several pages left, but I can't, I can't continue to preach. It's, it's in this moment right now. Somebody needs to find a place of forgiveness today. Somebody needs to forgive somebody else. Somebody today needs to make up your mind. You need to allow yourself to grow deeper. Your, your relationship with God deeper today. you got to redirect. Because you know that where you are today matters for who you'll be tomorrow. I really don't think that we truly understand Where you are right now matters where you'll be tomorrow. Would you stand with me? It is so vital that we recognize who Jesus is and where we can find him. To find that location of where we can find change. You and I should never be far from God. James 4, 8 says, draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse, it says, cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. You see, when you and I get close to God, things change. A closeness to God alters our life and lifestyle every single time. I've got, I've got to close. Are you hungry today? He that hungers and thirsts after righteousness. Are you sick and tired of just going through the motions? Hear me today. You've got to change your location. You've got, you've got to become more like Mary. Amen. And, 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 and begin to listen to what, what God is saying to you and, and you, be, you need to go get closer to doing the things uh, amen that God wants you to do and farther away from those things that pull you away from God I wonder if there's somebody here this morning that will defy it doesn't matter what somebody else might be thinking defy your past defy and, and place your life in the hands of Jesus today Someone, is there someone here that wants to get closer to God? Someone that wants to make a difference in their life? Open this altar for every man, woman, boy, and girl, every person here today to draw near to God. Amen. Into your arms, I'm drawing near Come on, somebody. Come on. Do what you need to do. Do what you need to do. Identify what it is in your life that is your distraction. What is your constant distraction? What is it that keeps detouring you from that daily walk with God? You may have to. You're going to have to grow your faith in God. You may have to say no. You may have to disconnect from social media. Turn off the television. 
Stop reading those articles. You may have to separate yourself from certain friends right now so that you can get to where you need to be in God. So things that God's saying to you can change you forever. I feel the power of God. I feel God here today. In the name of Jesus, God is never to blame. Did you know that God is never to blame? It's my only heart, Jesus. It's your desire, my desire for this world and for the flesh that keeps God at bay. God's never going to have a forced bride. He wants you to be willing. He wants you to love him so much. He wants you to be like Mary. God's tearing down to rebuild. Just giving you life. Say, here I am, Lord. God, I've got to make new. I've got to make new today. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Wrap me in your arms. Wrap me in your arms. Wrap me in your arms. me in your arms. Hallelujah. Wrap me in your it's in these moments right now. Wrap me in it's in these moments right now that you made up your mind that God will, He will break the chains that bind you. Wrap me in your arms. Your mind may be in a prison. In your arms. You may be captivated by this world, but this is where God.